uh, some news out of this one, but the Mavs do defeat Golden State by 10. Luka's triple-double streak ended. Kyrie, though, 23-8-10. and 10. Luka was short on the rebounds, the assists, um, but he also left early with a hamstring injury, which I hope is not a big deal. But we haven't talked a ton about Kyrie Irving this season because it has been a lot of Luka, Luka, Luka. But he's got, you know, 25 points a game, 49% shooting, 42 from three over the course of the season, Lou. Do we just overlook him simply because we talk so much about Luka? Of course. You know, uh, I, I mentioned yesterday, there's so many guys with, with these gaudy big numbers and having these historical runs in, on, on the stat sheets that, you know, sometimes other guys that are playing really well and playing consistently can be overlooked. And, and because of that, he's standing ne right next to one of the guys that's doing it. He, he's the backcourt back court mate of Luka Doncic. And Luka's having another historical season. He's putting up historical numbers. And Kyrie has been able to fly under the radar because of that. And still be able to play good, really good basketball for the Dallas, Dallas Mavericks. Even though, you know, they're sitting eighth in the West and they haven't played as well as they would like to as a team. Individually, Luka Doncic has, played, has had one of the better seasons of his career, um, and he's standing right next to him. So it's easy to get overlooked because of that. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. It's not like we, we, we might not talk about him a lot, but you better believe that on every team they face, he's the second thing they talk about. People aren't sleeping on Kyrie Irving on the court. And I think just all the drama that surrounded his name the last couple of seasons, no one's ever doubted his production on the floor. He's always been one of the best. He's always been one of the most fun to watch. And and now he's available. Everything he went through in Brooklyn and everything, you know, which again was kind of self-inflicted, but he, he We've been talking about Kyrie for so long in a negative light that now we're not. And now he's just hooping. And now it's almost probably got to be re a relief for him that we're not even really talking about how well he's doing, let alone, you know, the negative things we've been talking about in the past. So I think it's a great situation for him. The fact that he's not the first option, he's not the guy getting double teamed every single night, and he's got the freedom to go at people one-on-one -on -one and play off Luka and knock down shots and still do it in a really efficient way, shooting almost 40, 41, 42% from three. He's getting the best looks he arguably has gotten in his career, and that's a lot to do with the way people defend Luka Doncic. So he's having a great year. Hopefully Luka's hamstring is not bad because that would be an absolute, you know, that, that would be the end of the Dallas Mavericks this season. But Kyrie Irving has been huge, and you're right. We haven't talked about him because Luke has been so good, but I think it's a good thing. Like, let's let's let Kyrie Irving do what he does and hoop. I mean, if you if it matters to you, Luca did travel with the team to OKC. I want to move to Daniel Gafford in a second, but I have one really quick question about Kyrie um, that's ego-related, because obviously everyone in this world has very healthy egos. Do you think there's a little part of him that is bugged by the fact that we don't talk about him at all anymore or does he actually enjoy this peace and quiet i'm sure part of it everyone wants to be praised everyone wants to be talked about but he, he's also he's been in this situation before he's played with lebron james he's played with kevin Durant. he's played with really good players that get most of the attention and most of the notoriety but that's not to say you know Kyrie irving still a hall of fame basketball player all nba all-star multi you know he's still got a crazy resume and he still has respect and real hoopers know Kyrie irving is nasty he's one of the best ball handlers one of the best iso players it's one of the best point guards we've ever seen so i think he understands his value his credit but yeah part of him is probably you know, look at me. I, and he probably thinks he's better than Luca. You know what I mean? Like he, as, as an athlete, you have that drive, but I, I don't, I don't think there's any like bitterness towards Luca here. Why are you smiling Lou? Yeah. Why are you smiling? <laughs> what are you up to? <laughs> now, what's going on over there? Nah, I, nah, I just, you know, every once in a while, I don't get enough sleep and I feel a little silly, <laughs> man. So I was, I was. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Nah, this is um, Luke. I, I agree with Chandler, though, man. It's just he's played against a lot of people. I don't think this bothers him. No, I, I think it's a lovely Simple piece. I would, I would enjoy it if I was him. Okay, this next thing I think is, I don't know, maybe should be talked about more. But Daniel Gafford, it's 33 consecutive field goals he's got going right now. That is only too shy of the record that Wilt Chamberlain got back in 1967. I find this to be oddly very impressive just because, you know, we watch enough basketball. You're like, how have you not missed in 33 shots, Chandler? Am I crazy? Michelle, 
It might as well say 33 consecutive dunks. Well, okay. But don't people Which, miss those again, too? By the way, it's only happened with one other guy, Will. So the fact that like Dwight Howard or these other guys that didn't do this is pretty yeah. crazy. Like it's a crazy record. You, the, I think the, one yeah, of the most that different stats. You don't like it? You don't think it's a big deal? Efficient. Huh? I mean, I get. Uh, listen, I'm, only the way he's with, I'm, I'm only arguing what Chandler said. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chan. Okay. The way he's doing it isn't that impressive it's not like a kevin durant it's not like a you know mid-range taking demar Derozan hitting 33 shots in a row it's it's for the most part he's getting spoon fed at the rim but again he's also finishing and he's also i haven't seen every single basket i imagine a lot of them are dunks and i bet a lot of them are alley-oops where he's literally catching the ball and putting it in the rim so i, I think it's a cool stat i think I think he's aware now of this record. I don't, I guarantee you the next two will be dunks or layups. Not like he's going to take a pull up at the end of the shot clock in the next game. Yeah. Like he's got him for this record, but yeah, I mean, it's great. This is what, this is what Luca needed. He needed a great lob threat, like lively. You saw how good lively was with him now. And now Gafford gives him just another option. Um, and it's great. I hope he breaks the record, but is it the most impressive record I've ever seen in my life? No. no. Okay, for the record, 30 of the 33 are at the rim. But in fairness, we've seen yeah. plenty of dudes also catch a lob. 100%. And so and there's it's, been a lot of big rim running. Uh, so, so, so what's the math on that? That's 15, 15 assists for Luca. <laughs> Those are at, all at lobs. Least, like, yeah, yeah, it's... it's... I, yeah, to, to his credit, like you said, he is finishing those. He is finishing. That That's part of it, but... Like a Dwight Howard, we're not throwing the ball to him in the post, ask him to go get us a bucket where he's playing with his back to the basket and these are hook shots or these are finishes. No, like he's he's eating off the land and that land is Luka Doncic's world. <laughs> so, By the way, salute since, since I've said that it's probably exhausting playing with Luka Doncic, this guy's got 35 <laughs> straight, 33 straight Alley oops at the rim from Luca. I didn't really. Daniel well. Gafford is just fine. He happy as hell yeah. playing with Luca. <laughs> yeah, not exotic. everyone gets the the same benefits. Okay, so thirty three. I get it. They're what is a normal sort of streak for shots made in a row? Do you guys even keep track of things like that? Hmm. I mean, during a game, you know, if you're the most hot, I've ever like, made was nine. That was it. Not nah, okay. All right, those are those are shot shots. And that was in Real one shots. game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like the game I hit the 10 Real threes shot. and a half, that was 10 threes in a row. I think that's uh, that's harder to do than 33 dunks. There you I go. Think. Now that's impressive. So now this is impressive not... too. We we we're not gonna we're not gonna take take any. We're not gonna hate on this. No this one's done the, it before. No, no one's exactly. done it before. Exactly. It's definitely impressive. I am just saying. I'd be way more blown away if it was, you know, Grayson Allen or Bradley Beal hitting 33 jumpers and threes. You know what I mean? Like, well, sure. That would be crazy. Um, all right. So one of the buckets we can show. It's got a good video. Uh, it's Doncic, but there's a nutmeg involved. And unfortunately for Clay Thompson, he is the victim in this one. Um, is that, where is that in the embarrassing things that can happen? Because it feels Not like it might be big. I don't no? think so. Not at all. I it's think it's embarrassing. Basketball. It looks embarrassing to a to a fan. Uh, That's normal. Yeah, to a fan, but you ask it two former players. We don't like this is nothing. Hmm. Yeah, this this is it looks cool, but it is it's nothing. So yeah, that it's happens all, to you, you're not matter. Pass. Well, yeah, of course it's a great pass. But it would look you don't get madder that at that than a different way of sort of being showed up. No, because no, you know what it is? It's, it's, it's actually bad. It's bad defense, if anything, because your legs are spread wide open when you're supposed to be in a different type of stance than that. I, I, I'm no defensive specialist, so I won't go into a long monologue about that. But, yeah, this is a, this is anticlimactic. This is not even a big thing to even talk about. Yeah, Crazy, because it looks think cool. The, the, the finish by Gafford is almost more impressive than the pass to me, honestly. There you go. See, that's that one was, of And that was bucket number 32. Yeah. yeah. Like by the way, he could have easily just he could have easily just missed that dunk. So you got to give him credit for finishing for sure. I'm giving him mad credit. Well, we mentioned the Luca situation where he left with a hamstring injury, um, and of course the triple double streak has ended. He did get on a plane to go to OKC with the team. He of course, and this is seems to be year after year we talk about it, has the highest usage rate in the league. I know MVP is is an award on its own, but you could make the argument that Luca to his team 
is by far the most valuable. Could you not, Chandler? Yeah, I mean, he's got the ball, you know, the most. But you look at guys like Gilkic, look how important Joel Embiid is to the Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, they they stink without him, and they were at home court advantage with him. So, like, there's a lot of guys that have crazy impact on their team. Luka is one of them. But I will say, another guy on this team averaging 25 points a game that can carry a team, and they have enough talent, they're deep enough to where they can still tread water and win games. So I don't know if he's the most important, but yeah, he's 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 there everything. I'll tell you this: if I expect them to advance and win, depending on their matchup in the first round, if Luke is out, hmm. no chance. No you chance. Though? No chance at all. I think that's fair. I don't care who they play. If Luke has not been that first round, they're losing. Uh, anybody on the standings, you don't care who they play. If he's out, New they're Orleans not winning. New Orleans Pelicans will beat them. And yeah, every, anybody I think would beat them without Luka Doncic in the first round. Damn, that's a bad place to I live. Feel like, I feel like that about a, a few guys, though. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, it it's feels, true. It like, feels look, daunting. Like, let's, I feel like we could do a whole segment here. But let's say, let's say... The Mavs, let's say the Mavs with Luka yeah. are the eighth seed and the Nuggets are the first seed, but Jokic is out. Do you think the Nuggets beat the Mavs in a series? Ooh. Right. Like, who, who do we who do we like in a Jamal Murray-Kyrie Irving matchup? So it gets, it gets I tricky. Liked, I think Joel I Joel like Embiid. Hmm. Yeah, Joel Embiid actually went out, and that changed everything that we thought about the Philadelphia 76ers, and it, it showed in the play. They're still yeah. a good basketball team, but they're a really good basketball team with Joel Embiid. They had championship this, aspirations with him in the yeah. lineup. Now, you know, they're fighting for home court advantage still. This is why I love, like, the Clippers and the Suns. Kawhi Leonard's out. Oh, bummer. We got James Harden and Paul George. Bradley Beal's out. We got Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. It's when it's when his team is so reliable, like a Jokic, like and even with the Celtics, like Tatum goes out, Brown goes out, that would be devastating. But at least they have those other guys and Holiday and Kate, like they have pieces. Jokic, Joel, Luca, those guys, it it stings if those guys are out. 